Though we've covered King of the Hill pretty intensively, we never run out of things to talk about when it comes to our favorite Arlen residents. And today, we're looking at the parents. Specifically, you want to know who does the best job raising their kids and what parents just ain't right. Hey, this is Brad with Wicked Binge, and this is King of the Hill Parents, Best to Worst. Are you gay? No, I sell propane. So just a couple of notes about our criteria. In many cases, we paired parents together because each one's parenting skills were on par with one another. But in a few cases, we broke the parents up as we felt that there was a significant disparity in parenting ability. And secondly, morality is a factor because this influences how a child is raised. But it is only one factor. We're also factoring in overall parenting skills and ability. And no, we aren't ranking Hank first. That's gonna go to Eduardo Felipe. A wealthy actor, he plays the very popular character, Monsignor Martinez. Vaya con Dios. We see a glimpse into his life when he invites Peggy to teach his children, explaining that they wanted to study in the United States. Sparing no expense for your children's education is a great thing, and when we see his children, they're well-behaved and respectful, not at all filling in the rich, spoiled kid stereotype. We could dock him a point for his choice to hire Peggy on a single class, where he was the main speaker. Be brave, little soldier. Lucky for him, it worked out with just a very, very awkward misunderstanding. I would never, never, never take you as a lover. All right, our silver medal of parenting goes to Hank Hill. Now, full disclosure, I know Peggy gets a lot of hate, but as far as parenting goes, Bobby gets a good balance between the two. Do not blame Bobby. I taught him to keep an open mind. That said, there's more parenting criticism to be thrown at Peggy, so Hank alone gets the silver medal. Hank is an all-around good dad, and his mission is to instill good values into his son because he believes that they will help him in life. He's a man of principle and puts his family above all else. Yeah, he has some issues. He struggles showing emotions to his son, but in his defense, being raised by Cotton likely screwed him up in that department, and he still makes the effort to make sure his son knows he loves him, even if it's difficult for him. The one thing that we see throughout the 13 seasons is that much of Bobby's goodness is influenced by his father's teachings. Hank might be a bit strict, but he teaches his son the importance of hard work and integrity, and compared to a lot of other dads on this show, he's definitely top tier. We're not animals. We'll wait in line like everybody else. We have to mention John Redcorn. Which may seem strange, but frankly, Redcorn has gotten the short end of the stick in a lot of areas in life. He isn't welcomed as a father figure to Joseph, which eats away at him. Even though Nancy rejects John as a role model or father for her son, one to keep her family together, he still made a point to try and teach Joseph things that he felt were important. I could give you and Joseph a ride home. He stepped in when he felt Joseph was straying, making an awesome move by catching the arrow aimed at the panda, and even Dale confessed that John had a hand in Joseph's youth. He taught the young man to ride a bike, tie his shoes, and likely more than that. And we even see John have an emotional breakdown, seeking comfort from Hank when he realizes there's still a distance between him and his son. I want my son back. John Redcorn is something of a tragic figure, desperate to raise his son from a distance without Joseph even knowing that he is his. And the only reason that he doesn't reveal the truth is because he understands it would destroy Joseph's life in many ways. We're gonna quickly mention Tilly next. Hank's mother. Tilly is a loving mother to Hank, and if it wasn't for her, Hank would likely have been more emotionally screwed up growing up because of Cotton. Mom, we're in public, one hand only, okay? She can be described as overly naive and too trusting, but it seems like she just wants to finally have the opportunity to experience life for herself in her older age. Though a lot of her naive decisions, such as falling for a mail scheme, has Hank constantly worrying about her. Show mom some respect while Bobby's in the room. Peggy is next. Hill's in the crib! Oh yeah! Okay, so much of what makes Peggy a good parent is done in collaboration with Hank. Hank and Peggy are prepared for pretty much anything, from floods to teenage rebellion. Go on, woman, get me my dinner! Bobby gets a good balance between the two, with Hank's need to control and stabilize everything, and Peggy boosting her son's confidence and encouraging his comedy. Heck, they even put up with their neighbors because they support Bobby and Connie's relationship, be it friendship or romantic. Now, what drops Peggy down a bit is, well, her narcissism. I am what the magazines call a superwoman. 
Whether it's a problem with low self-esteem or something else, Peggy has an incessant need to make everything about her, and although this is usually directed outwards to those outside her family, Hank and Bobby are the targets of this from time to time. One of the most deranged examples of this was when Peggy became jealous of Bobby's cooking skills because she felt it was a threat to what made her needed. And my pork chops were sitting right there! To the point where she literally stole their Thanksgiving turkey and biked across town in a disheveled mess to give the turkey to someone who would appreciate her. I breastfed my Bobby. Big mistake. Peggy has a lot of problems, but the truth is these extreme cases against her son are rare and she's quick to realize her mistake and remedy the situation because she loves her son more than anything. Now this may surprise some, but we're placing Maddie and Doc, Peggy's parents, next. Now Maddie isn't gonna win Mother of the Year. Peggy frequently complains the woman was not supportive of her and was never impressed. Do not say can't. You will not use contractions in this house. Maddie even had this weird mindset when living in Montana that Peggy should have married a neighbor boy to get his land stating love had nothing to do with it. And when Peggy didn't, Maddie blamed her for condemning the family. If you'd married Sven, we'd be doing all right. Now, we aren't saying Maddie is the best role model and Doc simply allowed all this to happen, but there are a few facts that remain. They taught Peggy how to fight and not only survive, but thrive. They taught Peggy to not take no for an answer and find a solution even a crazy one. And while they didn't support Peggy having interest in something other than the ranch, they didn't keep her from it either. They let her play softball, they let her date Hank, they let her have her books on whatever subject. They embody tough love than they do absence of love, and ultimately made Peggy the mother and wife she is, for better or worse. Next we have Con and Men. It's no secret how much they push their daughter into being the best. They make Connie practice violin and study to almost torturous levels putting pressure on her to be the best in all she does. Makes me practice violin five hours a day. But it comes from a good place, and it's also something that is cultural. Both Khan and Min learn English and left Laos just to provide a better life with more opportunities for their family, which is a pretty big accomplishment as parents. They did have a small lapse in judgment when told their effort wasn't enough, almost losing the house. But being reminded of his daughter's perseverance is what snapped Khan out of his depressive state, and the fact they would sacrifice all they could to get Connie into a top summer program is saying a lot. Overly strict, yes, but for the right reasons. I bet you never knew she could smile and play at the same time. Dale's father, Bug, was not a frequent character. He was hated by Dale for years, mistakenly kissing Nancy when he tried to hide his homosexuality. I loved my dad like a father. But when he found out about the renewal, he showed up in spite of his fear. He told Dale he understood if his son still hated him, but gave him an apology face to face and tried to mend their relationship. He quickly caught on that Joseph wasn't Dale's, and while he didn't reveal Nancy's secret, he did encourage her to tell Dale on her own. He wound up being able to reconnect with his son and get to know his grandson, while finally being able to be honest about his own identity. And we feel that says a lot about what kind of man he is. Any special friend of my dad's is a special friend of mine. General Gum, Min's father, made it on the list. He isn't a welcoming man to Khan, believing the former disco fan drug his daughter down, but he clearly has nothing but love for Min and Connie. Stand down, descendant of fishermen! He was revealed to have co-signed for their home in Arlen, and while he did try to break Khan's spirit, he did relent when men told the general to make things right. He was described as a ruthless man whose version of laid back is taking over small boards rather than entire communities. But he created a small ceramic elephant collection for his daughter, which was sweet. He's rough on Khan to say the least, but he loves his daughter and granddaughter. You are a failure. Enrique and Yolanda are a bit more frequent, but still apart from the main cast of Rainy Street. They aren't the most stable couple, having more than a few disputes over the years, with Enrique being kicked out briefly. My marriage is crumbling. Our love is dead. They don't manage their money well, as they almost lost their home due to Enrique's love of parties and blowing money. But to be fair, he also paid for a couple of funerals. But they do have love for their daughter by going all out for Inez's quinceanera. They also fought for their home and took their neighborhood back to its former glory. You heard of a housewarming? This is going to be a house inferno! So with that said, that ends our good section. Now we enter the gray area. Keep in mind, many of these parents still have a lot of good, but are weighed down quite a bit by some bad. 
and a great example of that are Nancy and Dale. Now, we could have broken them up into separate entries because they both have very different problems, but they're pretty close to being on par with one another in terms of parenting quality. We'll state the obvious first. Nancy has lied to Joseph about his real father all his life, blowing off his concerns while growing up to cover her own infidelity. Dale has insisted that Joseph is an alien, recognizing that he wasn't there in person to impregnate Nancy, but says his sperm must have been used. Joseph's real father is Nancy loves you. An alien. They have a mess of a relationship likely messing up Joseph's perspective on how a functional marriage should be, and although they care about Joseph, they're both very selfish and irresponsible people. But they do care about their son's happiness and success. When Joseph was offered a scholarship, Dale insisted his son go to the best school available. He did a poor job of listening to his son's wants, and trying to give Joseph to a rich family was a bad call. But Dale did express his depression at having done so and was quick to seek forgiveness and right his wrongs. You're back home and I'll never let you go again. And as evil as Nancy can reveal herself to be towards other people, that dark side is never directed towards her son. They're both very flawed people but do care for their kid. So we're going to mention Bill due to a couple of factors. First, his relationship with Bobby, and second, his brief fatherhood of Wally. No, we're not saying the Bill being Bobby's father theory is true, although it is compelling, but he does take a sort of fatherly role at times. Bill is easily manipulated and caves to anything if it means being liked. When he took the delinquent Wally under his wing, that's what resulted in Wally terrorizing the neighborhood and being a bad influence. Now get off our property or I'll citizen arrest you. It was good to see Bill found a way to straighten the kid out, convincing the judge the army was a better place than jail, which actually showed that he was capable of some tough love, despite his emotional need to please people. Bill's also shown to be a good role model when it came to tasks such as cooking taking Bobby under his wing to learn the family barbecue recipe. We only light the fire with a page of good news from the paper. And like I said, while there are some odd theories about Bill being Bobby's biological dad, regardless, we can't argue that the way Bill looks out for the kid is touching. Billy has a lot of problems, and yet he still demonstrates an ability to be a moral parental figure when given the rare chance. Kat Savage, Michael's mother, is next. She spent way too much of her life chasing trends, dedicating her time and money towards every fad imaginable. She enrolled her daughter in a class just to help Michael have the fancy party, and she encouraged Michael and Bobby's interest in one another. She loses quite a few points because of her lifestyle. The fact that she changed her name just to be seen as more popular was not the right thing to teach her daughter, and it clearly had a poor effect on Michael, with a young girl throwing a fit from having her party ruined. Kat even makes some comments along the lines of getting Michael out of her treehouse again, and if it hadn't been for Peggy and Bobby's entrance, the girl would have freaked out about something else. If it wasn't this, she'd freak out about something else. Overall, she may mean well, but she's definitely teaching some seriously unhealthy habits to her daughter. Wesley and Annette were brief characters but made an impression. Wesley helped bring back the Straight Arrow program in Arlen, though he had his own way of doing it that Hank didn't agree with. Hey, Dad, look! My fire's roaring! While Wesley and his wife were indeed overprotective of their six children, they had their reasons to be. Their methods of banning sugar and violent video games weren't necessarily wrong, given their kids were so young and impressionable, and having various conditions such as hypoglycemia and ADHD, but the way they disgraced Hank for the way Bobby was, was wrong. You're a bad influence, Bobby, and I won't have that here. Additionally, their overprotective nature is just too much and will likely lead to a lot of problems for their kids later on. And the skills that Hank originally wanted to teach, that he condemned, were skills that were great to learn and emphasize self-reliance and discipline. Myrna, Lucky's sister, is next. Much like Wesley and Annette, she's controlling and raised their kids by the book while looking down at anyone who does otherwise. They aren't allowed to drink juice. They'll have water and read a book. She may have been praised in the baby class for her know-how, but she still doesn't seem to think of her kids as more than a possession. She was quick to pawn them off on her husband, Jason, just so she could make sure Luann got a hypnobirth, criticizing Peggy for treating Bobby like a disease. This is what happens when you give kids juice. Now, we're not saying being up to date on child safety is bad, but becoming so obsessed you don't even let your kids drink juice? We call that overkill. 
Lucky and Luann are not what people typically have in mind when it comes to parenthood, but the fact is they love and adore Gracie. The only reason we had to drop them so low on our list is because they're pretty clueless on how to actually raise a child. Dealing with Gracie is harder than I thought. Hank bestowed the advice that they will in fact make mistakes, but the best they could do was try, and providing a home with food and clothes was a good start. Luann felt lost being identified as just a mom for a while, even having to give up her career as a hairdresser, but that doesn't make her a bad parent. She and Lucky are always willing to learn from other parents and seek help in times of confusion, like when Lucky claimed he had a rolling baby. I've got a rolling baby. That said, they're both very irresponsible, and Lucky's life philosophies that involve mooching off other people, mixed with Luann's ignorance on just about everything, is a pretty bad influence on their kid. With the gray area complete, we now drop down into the bad and evil territory. These parents have a lot of problems. Ted and Cindy are parents to Chang, and it shows. Chang is a bully. He's self-entitled, gets his way without doing much work, and sees women as objects. The chain train stops for the ladies. We can only blame Ted and Cindy since they seem pretty clueless to their son and his limits. They buy his way into the best programs and schooling just to pump up his college applications and forbid Chang from dating Connie, just so they wouldn't have to be around Khan and men. We've been forbidding Chang to date Connie. And we've seen plenty of examples of both Ted and Cindy being passive aggressive and underhanded, such as Ted trying to trick Hank to join Nine Rivers, and Cindy making Peggy take over her role for a cozy kitchen. The Dooleys have earned a small spot on the list, with their most well-known appearances being when Dooley ran away and when Peggy was fired for spanking their son, it's easy to see that they do not have a handle on their child. I'm sure Stuart deserved it. We know what a handful he can be. Dooley is a well-known troublemaker, pantsing Peggy and beating up other kids. They're neglectful and seem to be fine with their kids behaving badly, so long as it doesn't bother them personally. Really quickly, we'll mention Dee Dee. Cotton's new wife, she seems to be completely incapable of a lot of motherly behaviors. She ain't fat. I got her knocked up. And doesn't really have a problem with her son being raised by a maniac like Cotton. She doesn't show any motherly instincts at first, though Dee Dee seemed to suffer from postpartum depression, rejecting GH when he was first born, and showing no maternal instinct whatsoever. She allowed herself to be a doormat and had no problem pawning her baby off on a stressed Bobby or an injured Peggy. You took Peggy's bottle and I took the baby's bottle? All right, our bronze medal goes to Cotton Hill, the man who killed 50 men. While Cotton did love G.H. and did manage to teach Hank some life lessons, he was a pretty monstrous father. He was emotionally abusive to his son Hank, and really just about everyone else. Hey Hank's wife, Cotton. Many of Hank's problems with showing emotion are likely a result of having Cotton as a dad. Cotton also openly detests his son to varying degrees throughout the show. The reasons why Cotton isn't gold or silver are small, but worth mentioning. Firstly, Cotton may seem to hate his son, but when Jimmy Carter gave him the hypothetical option to press a hypothetical button that would erase Hank from existence, Cotton didn't press that button. My father said he wouldn't obliterate me? Additionally, on his deathbed, he revealed that despite having such a low opinion of Hank, he actually detested Peggy way more, saying that she wasn't even good enough for his loser son. This was supposed to happen to you. Which shows that he kinda cares about Hank, sort of. But the main reason why we'll give him a couple of points is because despite being an awful parent, he's actually a pretty decent grandparent who loves Bobby. All right, we'll, we'll give him that. But Strickland, being a parent to Jody and possibly others, has earned a very low rank for obvious reasons. Peggy marked him right as a drunken adulterer, and Buck is proud of it. When he meets his son, his first idea is take the man out drinking and gambling. What do you say to the old man buying you a drink? He encouraged Jody to be just as reckless as he was, even though Buck's lifestyle led to a heart attack, a divorce, and a suspicion of murder. Even after they worked together to get Hank his job back, it was implied at the end of the episode that they went on another bender. Buck is an all-around degenerate, so this behavior is pretty much exactly what you would expect, old top. No one is more deserving of the title of worst parents on this show than Hoyt and Leanne. Alright, let's start with Hoyt. 
Who's Peggy's brother? He left his wife after being attacked, initially insisting he didn't want to be near Arlen until he was sent her death certificate. When he did show up, he went right back to stealing, lying, and even framing Lucky for a robbery. Woo, that's close. Fortunately, Lucky got out, refusing to take the fall, but that was only after hearing Hoyt try to frame Luann, his own daughter, for drug possession. Leanne is not much better than her husband. In fact, if anyone is worse than Hoyt, it's her. When drunk, she's violent, loud, and indecent. It was supposed to be a surprise! The reason she had to be arrested was for attacking her husband with a fork, and she tried doing the same thing again to Buckley before Peggy stopped her. She used Bill for money and is both physically and emotionally abusive to every man she's in a relationship with, not to mention comfortable manipulating her daughter whenever she needs to. Truly, both the scum of Arlen. But what do you think? Who are the best and worst parents in Arlen, Texas? Let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit that notification bell and binge our good to evil playlist, where we break down the morality of the characters in your favorite cartoons, shows, and movies. But most importantly, stay wicked.